Hi folks, this is Pastor Jordan from Park Avenue Baptist Church in El Dorado. I wanted to sport one of my masks that my wife Kathy has made for me. Um, this says, it's backwards on the screen, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I do wear these when I go into a public session uh, place or like I go into a quick shop or I go in groceries or or to buy some other things at, it, at the department store, um, like Walmart. And I'll say a word about that. You hadn't seen me wearing this, but I wanted to do, do that because when I was preparing for my devotions today, I uh, God put something on my heart, and I'll share that in a minute. But uh, <laughs> just because it's kind of hard to talk, um, and I want you to concentrate on the message God has put on my heart today through one of my ongoing series lessons. And I'll, uh, I wanted to share this with you. And I'll say some more about that in a minute. So I'm going to take this off. But if you need some, if you need something like this and you plan to come worship with us soon, give me a call and we'll, we'll make sure we can find one for you. Uh, because... And I'll say a word about that, too. Uh, we want to do the right thing. I don't think we should live in fear uh, each day. And I try to, every Sunday, pray for God's protection and healing uh, to be with us. Today, I want to share the devotion before I say a word about the mask and how that relates to what I'm saying Uh I'm going through a series of the 33 things that happen at the moment of uh, salvation. And today is number 18, and we become free from the law. A Christ follower, it is said, I'll bring this down here so I don't look up there all the time, does not have to perform to be accepted. Uh, a Christ follower already is accepted by Christ, in Christ. The performance standard of the law, which this is initially re referencing, is when a man, which man, it's men and women, never met up to. You've heard the, the passage, we've all fallen short of the standard that God put forth. And it's why we need Christ. And really it's exhausting that the only thing we could do to be accepted by God is to do everything we need to do right. Uh, it's not uplifting. We're not bound by that power. For a person is now free from the law because he is dead to the law and sin. Uh, dead to sin through Christ. A couple passages to lift up. Romans 8, 2. And because you belong to him, that's Jesus, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So, my dear brother, and Romans 7, 4. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who has raised, was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. What does that tell us about a relationship with God and, and to God's law, most, more specifically? I believe the scriptures that tell us when we accept Christ and he begins taking over our heart, and that's the the driver's seat of our life and soul, um, the laws of God become more a part of who we are as we walk with faith. And that's a whole lot easier to do. And I was thinking of an example, you know, if I first learned to walk, if my parents had given me, now what you need to do is, your <laughs> son, is you need to learn how to balance and carry your weight upright, etc. No, most of the time, we and, and my parents, I'm sure, would hold my hand or 
give us something to hold on to to start balancing and then taking steps and the rest of the time we were watching mom and dad and older brother or sister um, to see you know motivated to how to do that and so as we are walking with God the the truth of his law and the greatest commandment sums up all the laws that are really essential and that is to love God with all of our heart all of our soul and all of our mind and our neighbor as ourself uh, and that's anyone who crosses our paths literally virtually uh, in our mind that we have an influence on a Christ follower is now shares under grace and grace I want to share a definition of grace I've shared throughout the years that I was given to uh, given to me when I was studying uh, to be a pastor by Ed Kyle. Good, yeah, I'd love to call him up someday. And that is that grace is God loving us. And the means of grace or the spiritual disciplines are the ways we make spiritual space in our life for God to love us. Obey, we obey when we do that because of who He is and what God has done for us. Not because we must, but because we desire to serve and honor God as we realize what His grace has offered to us more and more in our life. To be free from the law in this context is to be free from a works orientation, striving to someday be good enough to be accepted by God. The law produces bondage, strains us, performance orientation and legalism, legalistic guilt from which we, mankind, humankind, is now truly free through a day-to-day -day relationship of grace through Christ. So what does God's grace look like in your life? Is that a free get-out-of-jail card? Well, that's just a, a small piece of it. For me, God's grace is I allow Him to keep working. And I, as I keep learning to walk upright and do what God wants me to do as he lives in me. Uh, he shows me more opportunities to do the right thing. And I ask, encourage you in this uh, devotion to take time to talk to God today about the wonder, the wonder I can, of undeserved favor and freedom from the law in your life. Hmm. There's so much, so much to share. Now, this devotional made me think about, you know, uh, we are in the process of slowly opening back up um, after being uh, some more than others shut down from being physically together. I, I like the, the physical distancing better than the term social distancing because you and I are together in a social way right now on phone calls and and uh, live video chats with one another. But when we come back together, and again, if you need a, a mask and uh, like this, uh, I know people who are making them, or if you can't get a hold of one, if you feel better uh, when you come, even though we're going to try to be six feet apart, we got disinfectant, we're trying to keep things clean, doing all the common sense things to keep do our part. Uh, I see pictures of my sister, younger sister, who is an occupational therapist, and she's got a, when she's at work, she has a mask on like this. If it, she's going to meet with a patient, it's a white disposable map, mask on, and she's got her head covered uh, for the purposes of not being a recipient of this very contagious virus and those not, uh, not being, perhaps sharing it unknowingly because they say that you may not know you're a carrier. And uh, I also thought of a, a 
a title of a book and I tried to find it. It's been on my desk and I haven't cracked it open for a while. It's written by one of the authors, I think either Mimrith or Meyer of the online counseling group called Never Call Them Jerks. And, when, and we're talking about a variety of things, but those who are getting us down. And one of the things they say in that book is that because the jerk may be you, Sometimes we open our mouth and insert foot and say things at an inappropriate time that uh, I just ask, we ask for God's forgiveness to do that. But when we are out there and when you are coming in to worship, if you want to mar wear a mask, please do, even if you're six feet away. We're trying to do our part to keep people safe, but don't live in fear. Uh, ask God each day, and I, as I try to do, for his protection and healing presence. You know, all the distancing we've done is to try not to overwhelm our medical uh, industry. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. But I, uh, my, my, our daughter's a, a nurse and uh, they're doing everything they can. She's not been a lot of places where she'd uh, may have normally gone because she's a nurse and she is around people all the time that may or may not have been uh, be a carrier. She's doing her part. And to uh, make fun of one another if they want to wear a mask or don't wear a mask, that's being a jerk. And I don't think it's what Jesus would have us to do. The, the scripture I posted earlier, and I try to do one of these about every day, comes from an app and uh, that offers these up for me. I don't always just post those, but today's was a favorite one of mine. And uh, you can go on the Facebook page and see that. It's And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians three seventeen. What would Jesus do? Perhaps, yes, he would wear these, uh, but he was, would not be uh, do it fearfully. He would do it out of respect, out of love for others. Uh, I, I believe those of us who have been around one another are probably uh, building up some immunities. I heard another conversation going on uh, recently that says, hey, uh, we need to start building up the immunity. And uh, I, the stuff you read out there is, so many things. Um, I posted something uh, uh, another person wrote about um, how to read the internet uh, because there's so much information out there. Uh, seek God first. Relate to one another in love. Um, do your part. Uh, I am washing my hands when I go out and shopping and come back and put stuff away. Kathy says, did you wash your hands? Oh, better do that. We're just doing our part. But do it in love. Hey, Jesus loves you and so do we. We are starting to, in steps to come back together and worship. If you need one of these, call. And we'll try to get one. If you have your own, if you feel better coming, please you're welcome to wear that. And we're not going to make fun of you. If they, if someone does, I will have a talk with them. Um, hey, uh, we're all in this together. But, you know, I believe all the, God is going to watch over us. Um, I hear stories of people of all different ages that have become sick and have been affected by this. So let's keep loving each other through this, but let's keep loving us, each other going forward. Uh we're laughing because of the joy the Lord has put in our heart, not whether or not we are wearing a mask or we're not wearing a mask. Uh, let's do what Jesus would do in love, all the time asking for protection. I pray daily, I hope I pray daily, for God to protect you and our household uh, and keep us healthy. And for all those who are around this um, virus and other communicable diseases, uh, that they would be protected. We ask for, in Jesus' name, 
that he would heal our land and the world from this uh, virus in a, in a powerful way. And then we would honor one another, not speaking out in, in hateful ways because it's, we're all getting frustrated being uh, confined. But uh, let's do that love and use the opportunity to keep spending time with God. Uh, the law that this devotion spoke of is not the, the same law that we're uh, dealing with now. We're supposed, not supposed to be gathering in, or be six feet apart. Um, don't be afraid of, of, of uh, doing what you need to do, but don't be afraid so much that you're constrained to even a living because the love of God the healing power of God is here for us. And let me close with a prayer because Jesus loves you and he will watch over us. As a follower of Christ, and if you are not a follower of Christ and would like to talk about what that means, give me a call, 316-321-5858. Send a prayer request to pray, prayer, P-A-B prayer at gmail.com. That is P. A B P R A Y E R at gmail.com. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you for your grace that we cannot earn. And help us, Lord, by your grace, by your power, by your Holy Spirit to live as Jesus would have us live each day. And again, Lord, we ask for your protection. Uh, to be with those who are most vulnerable, uh, whether they're, they're out there on the front lines or they have health issues. But help us, Lord, as we begin the steps we need to take to live with the joy of the Lord and as we worship together, as we do different things. Help us have that peace that passes understanding. Help us do what Jesus would do. And we ask in Jesus' name, for your healing power to heal this land of, the, of this virus and help us to wash our hands, help us to do our part and we give you all the thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. A little longer today, but I just felt my heart was pounding today. So, hey, we'll talk to you later. Uh, That's all I have to say today. Give us a call. Give us an email. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.